Our next speaker will be Lutz Donnerhacke. He will tell us about RPSL and uh, how to generate out of these configuration files. Lutz. Did you use Twitter here? Did somebody use Twitter here? Did you notice that we are on Russian network? This IP block is geolocated to Russia. So I will speak in Russian now. Trust with you. No, of course not. Uh, I'm from East Germany, so I should be able to speak Russian, but I can't. Uh, I'm a technical guy. I'm unable to speak other languages. Um, was never good in school in languages. Um, no, um, the main problem is that I'm from a rural area, so I'm working for a very small ISP, only dealing with rural area customers, low bandwidth, low infrastructure, no intelligence, even in the supporting stuff or the developing stuff. So that's my position. Um, enough from me, let's start. I talked about rural area. We are uh, an operator for an ISP who provides internet in rural areas. We are not owning the network, we are only operating it. That means that I have to document what I'm doing because somebody else will need to understand what I'm doing. So I think I have technical issues. Oh, fine. So, uh, I decided to go to a very complicated issue for the uh, ISP I'm uh, doing operation for. Uh, the information how the connection to the other world, the PGP world, the default free zone, is configured and why it's configured in this way. I do not expect that somebody there will ever look at the router configuration. But they try to make decisions based on uh, how it's operated. And in most cases, I will be informed after the decision. So I have to deal with it. The best way I can do is to provide them this information that I can point out and say, I said you before that. Even if you didn't look, it's your problem. So what I'm using to uh, describe these people what I'm doing with PGP. I'm using the routing policy specification language, RPSL. It's defined in various RFCs and it's as old as iOS. And you know, the standards, uh, standards evolve a lot slower than software. So the iOS software is developing faster than the standard. On the other hand, there is software to generate configuration for the iOS from the standard. And this software even evolves slower than the standard. So now we have the situation that the software is unable to generate a usable configuration. It's only a documentation issue at the moment. RPS, RPSL is only used for documentation anymore. So because nobody has a use case for, besides using it for documentation, and besides it's required to have an RPSL code in an autonome object in the right database, uh, people tend to use inaccurate or incomplete information, put something in saying, I accept everything from, every, uh, from everybody. Um, for more details, please call us. Or similar things. If you have a good peering coordinator, you will find a lot of remarks in the object telling you what he might be try to tell you about the peering policy. There might be some short or longer sentences describing what they are doing. It's very inconvenient. Why we should do this? First, I, from my perspective, I have to explain the peering policies to other people. That's hard for me because I'm not very good in social things. 
I do not like to speak to other people. I like to speak about myself, but I do not like to speak with other people. There's a difference. Um, the other point is that if I speak something, tell other people something, they forgot what I'm saying. And I forgot to tell uh, what I want to tell. So we have a lot of information. And I do not like this anymore. So the, that's the explain part. The other part is the appearing concepts part. I'd like to tell people who want to understand what I try to do here. So I try to explain it to them by demonstrating how it will work. So they can follow the decision and they can make their own ideas about uh, the configuration I'm uh, representing in the RPSL. And that is why it comes back to the roots and saying it might be possible that we got, uh, came back to an RPSL which is still uh, is, is really, again, usable to generate configuration. We heard a lot of about automation, but if you ask anybody about where are the sources of your uh, uh, router configuration, internal database. An artificial language, something else. But nobody is using RPS Alpha. Or, <laughs> no. Okay, How's, how, uh, how does RPS, uh, RPSL Work. You, get, uh, you see this in the in the outnum object. You have from blah, 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 outnum x, we do following action if we accepting the following term or other way around. But it doesn't work in this way. This uh, standard didn't work in this way. It comes the other way around. If there is a routing update coming in, check for an accept condition. If it's matching, do the action. And if it's still working, try to apply it to the peering policy. It sounds strange, but it's really this way. And has some interesting side effects. The first side effect is you can't do a, neg uh, a, a negation. You can't say, for instance, I want to do something with the AS123, and this is the only clause I want to apply to this peering partner doesn't work. If you have any other rule which might be matched for another routing update, it will work for this autonomous system too. So you can't restrict it to a peering partner. It only works on networks, on routes. You are very familiar. You all uh, had your RIPE course, so you, I, I do not need to tell you something about us route definitions or us prefix parts. But the point which is missing in the RIPE uh, training courses is the legal uh, part of uh, RPSL. We have two building blocks which can be glued together. The one glue is accept, saying I doing usually I doing action A, except action B. Except means if you have a match in B in the later part, we do not apply A on route-based, not on peer-based. So if I have a special condition for a peer, a special peer, and I do it in the accept part, it will not work anymore on any other peer. Don't do this. The interesting part is the refined part. It says do both. Apply the one, uh, the, the rule set a and apply the rule set B together. Both matching conditions, both matching actions. And do not use parentheses and do not think about. Because these operators are right associative while the actions are left associative. Don't think about. Forget everything you Try to understand on this. Let the software do for you. Coming to the examples. One common example is I'm providing black hole service. And that's the way I'm describing a black hole service in the Outnum object. I'm just saying for IPv4 uh, unicast, 
if I take routes from the BGP into the routing table, the static one, then I change the next hop to a null device, this card traffic. And I do this only for the case if I have the community for black hole. Same for IPv6. For the question se uh, section afterward, I want to see some hands how this IPv6 address was generated. Which type of address is this? This way, I'm able to describe to others that I'm providing black hole service and I'm providing it on the standard way. Make it a little bit complicated. Prepending. Somebody else should be able to provide me a community with the route and say, if you hand it out in transit to another peering partner, please prepend it for me. How do I do this without naming all my peers? It's simple, I can use peer eyes for, uh, uh, in, the, in the RPSL construct. So I say, if I see a community 64629.prs, the IRs I'm currently um, peering with, and I see this community, then I prepend myself to this network, uh, uh, to this route, or I prepend twice if I use the other. The other refined rule, so they are both combined together, or both applied at once, <coughs> is the same for I do not, do not hand this route out to anybody, dot zero, or announce it to the special peer. All known from the route servers. Input sanitations. General rules, how I deal with incoming traffic, incoming routes, the first thing is, of course, I have to delete all communities I use myself for internal, peer, uh, internal control. Simple rule, just delete the communities from everybody on anything. And then refine for everything else, including these ones, do the following. Gishat. If I see the shutdown um, community, I set a local preference of zero, or 10. Uh, preference is defined the other way around. Doesn't matter, please look up in the RFC. I say, furthermore, I do not accept any route from our own eyes. How far it will go, doesn't matter. I do not un uh, accept any IPv4 reserved space. For black hole information, I make some Specializations. First specialization is for IPv4, I only accept post routes. For anything what's not black hole, I accept only up to slash 24. Clear, concise statement in the RS num object. For IPv6, I do the same, a little bit different because I have other network areas. So, how about software? <laughs> the software we have for processing RPSL is even too old for me. It does not run on the C64, but it's similar. If you try this, don't do it on IPv6 because the software is designed to enumerate all IP addresses in order to find ranges. If you try to set up an RPSL object and upload it to RIPE, it will not work because the RIPE parser is too stupid. So put some of the, uh, uh, the, the definitions out and put it in the remarks section. It's okay for me. And of course, RPSL is extendable, but nobody does the extensions. It's not implemented in the correct way. They are only uh, implemented by hand, not in a generic way. So we can't use extensions. It's all bad. Because time is over, I'm open for questions. I encourage you to update your RPSL object, the Outnum object,
in order to reflect more what's really happening in your network so that other or your peer partners can look at it and don't bother you to ask you questions you have to answer on email or more bad on phone. Don't do this. Write it in the RPSL, put it on the RIPE database, and be happy with it. Thank you very much. <laughs>